Congratulations, outdoor ladies and gentlemen. Give yourself a hand, a pat on the back, a hug because you just filled a tag. So you do your celebration dance, climb down your tree, follow that blood trail, and there at the end of it is your prize for all that hard work you put in this year, your deer. So you're all smiles, all high fives, and congratulations from your hunting buddies. Um, you take your trophy photos, hopefully following the tips I provided in the first video I did on this channel. Um, I'll link that up here some, somewhere, somewhere in that general area. But then those feelings begin to be replaced by other feelings like anxiety, intimidation, sometimes nausea. I'm okay. Field dressing that buck or doe you just harvested doesn't have to be as frustrating as it sometimes is. So avoiding bad decisions is usually what matters most when it comes to having a smooth, hassle-free field dressing process and taste at the dinner table. So here are four mistakes you should avoid when field dressing your deer. So the first mistake you should avoid when field dressing your deer happens before you even touch the deer with your hands. Now I know what you're thinking, how is it even possible to mess something up without even touching it? Just hold on, let me explain. Now that first mistake is poor shot placement. See, I told you I was going somewhere. Now poor shot placement can cause that deer to live longer after the shot. Not only does this increase your odds of losing that deer, but it also increases the levels of stress on it. That higher stress can degrade the meat and results in tougher, less flavorful meat. Now also consider what you're shooting that deer with. A dull broadhead or an overpowered rifle can cause a lot of damage and lost meat. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that that 338 is probably a little overkill for white-tailed deer. The damage caused by a large caliber like that will just render a lot of meat useless. Now the second mistake to avoid is putting off field dressing your deer too long. Look, I know you want to show off that deer, and you should, but don't drive around with that deer in the bed of your truck all day waiting to be field dressed. Look, I also know it can be gross. I know more than a few people who had to fight pretty hard not to throw up the first few times they cleaned a deer. I only made fun of them a little bit, and they eventually got used to it, and, and now they're fine with it. Now, the point of field dressing your deer is not only to get rid of all the intestines and other unwanted things within the deer, but also to start lowering that body temperature. Uh, deer's body is great insulator, and you need to get rid of all that, that stuff that's maintaining that heat. Um, the higher the temperature, the more bacterial growth. And the more bacterial growth, the higher chances of ruining the meat. Um, it's got to be done at some point, so you might as well just, just do it and get it over with. Of course, you could always take it to the meat locker and have them do it, but don't be surprised if you get a few funny looks. Now, the third mistake to avoid is using the wrong tools. Now, if you have to use a lot of force to cut on your deer, your knife is too dull. Now, not only is that going to take you forever to process your deer, but it's also dangerous. Just the more force you have to put on that, that knife to make a cut, the, the less control you have over it. And you'll eventually slip and cut your hand or cut your buddy's hand that's helping you. And he's not going to help you anymore. Now, a knife is the most obvious tool you're going to need for, for field dressing your deer, but they're not all created equal. You need a knife with good, high-quality steel that's not only going to sharpen easier, but it's going to hold that edge better. Now, if you're lazy or you suck at sharpening, which I am both of those, you need to check out a knife that's got some replaceable blades. Now, I use outdoor edge knives, but there's a few other ones out there that are just as good. Now, a few other tools you might want to have on hand are gloves, a hatchet or bone saw for breaking the pelvis, and pruning shears. Now, the fourth and final mistake to avoid is improper cleanup. Now, just because you finished field dressing your deer and dragged it back to camp doesn't mean you get to kick back open a beer and start telling those tall tales about how you spot and stalk this deer and how far the shot was. You're not done yet. There's still just a few things you need to do to make sure your venison tastes the best that it can. Now the first thing you need to do is give the deer a good rinse. Now hold up, I'm not saying give it a bath. What? Now all I'm saying is hose the inside off with some clean water before the blood dries. Now another thing you need to do is you need to keep that body temperature down. If it's not freezing outside, throw a couple bags of ice in the body cavity and also cover it with a tarp to protect it from bugs and, and any other contaminants that might get on it. 
So when it comes to hassle-free field dressing and great tasting venison, sometimes it's less about what you do and more about what you don't do. So keep these mistakes in mind next time you fill a tag. So until next time, stay informed.